Hey guys, my name is Tatos, and in this video I'm going to tell you how to play Vayne like Imp. Of course that includes runes, masteries, skill order, item builds, a game plan, how to play the leading phase, team fights, and much more. So stay tuned for that, but also note there are time codes for each chapter in the description and additional resources down below the video. So let's dive right into it. For your summoner spells we're going for the standard heal and flash in every single game. Imp is using a kind of special rune page for his AD carry play on Vayne and it's actually standard for the Quins, attack speed, marks, attack damage, seals, armor, but for the glyphs he's using a mix of attack speed, magic resist and mana regeneration. For the masteries however it's a standard 21-9 in zero build so that means all the AD, all the attack speed masteries but no spell or blade weaving. For the defense 3 it's a very standard 9 points, they are nothing extraordinary. For the skill order Imp always goes Q, W, E at level 1, 2 and 3 but the skill order depends on the game usually, on the enemy team matchup, on the composition, how much he needs the Q cooldown or the health damage, the max percent true health damage, of course from the W. So a Q max first is of course alright, a W max first works just as well in some cases, the E's max last of course always, but you can also do a mix for example, if you need some points into Q for lane, for dodging skill shots, you can put 3 points or 4 points into it at level 7 for example and then max the W. For item builds, Imp always starts with the Doran's Blade, Health Potion and Warding Totem. Now for the standard rush, he would go for the Blade of the Ring King into PD, Phantom Dancer and of course the Attack Speed Boots, but sometimes the Static Shift would be better than the Phantom Dancer, for example, if you need the Wave Clear, if you can use the Everest Blade to farm up more, if the laning phase is going very slow, for example, or if you can just simply buy it straight up and if you don't have the gold for Phantom Dancer, that's a very nice power spike, basically. Don't forget to buy consumables throughout the game, so that means mana potions also, also pink and green wards, and get the Scrying Orb as early as on your first pack, but at the latest when your support is the side zone completed. For your full build, it could look something like this, with the, of course, Last Whisper, Phantom Dancer, Blade of the Ring King, Mercurial Skimitar and the Attack Speed Boots with the Alacrity Enchant and a 6th item, which depends on the game. For example, Infinity Edge for bigger crits, Bloodthirster for a double lifesteal build, Triforce for more kiting, more health and more burst, of course. Also, the Ghost Blade, of course, works as well with the Armor Pen with the Movement Speed Boost. Now, this doesn't mean you buy the last item. The item build order depends on the game and what you need first. For example, if the enemy team is taking armor and early last whisper after Blade of the Ring King and Phantom Dancer can help. But for example, if you need the Quicksilver Sash or the Mercurial Skimitar, basically the, the cleanse, the extra cleanse to survive in fights or fight against the CC, then you buy it earlier. For example, if you need the Infinity Edge for crits, if you can just buy the Triforce pretty early, it's also a very good power spike. Or the Bloodthirster for the double lifesteal build, in some cases when the enemy just can't burst you down and you buy the double lifesteal build, it's very strong to sustain through fights even if the enemy teams are on you. Finally, there are some defensive items you can pick up in addition to the Mercurial Scimitar instead of it, for example, Benches Wheel, Garden Angel. Also, the Alacrity Enchant is the primary enchant you use on Vayne, sometimes the Home Guard Enchant when defing, and Elixir of Wrath standard pot when putting up in the mid and late game when you're nearing your full build or if you're actually at your full build. Vayne is known for a weak early and strong late game scaling, but it doesn't mean you have to play super passive every single game and every single matchup. Actually, depending on the support primarily, you can actually go aggressive sometimes in lane and snowball the lane that way further and faster. But freezing of course is important to know how and when to do it. If the main team is pushing for example, you need to learn how to last it under the turret. CSing is important, it's uh, the best source of income and the most reliable source of income in the game for example. Also, repositioning and dodging skill shots with the Q is important and necessary, how to know and when to do it. I'd just like to mention it here because many Vayne players just try to go ham with the Q or they always dodge backwards when it's easy to, to hit the skill shot nevertheless. So dodging sideways is with the Callista Jump similar works as well. Speaking about Callista, Vayne also likes to do Drakes and Barons fast, in a fast way with the Borg and the W damage. It's very very strong actually and can really really help you to sneak a baron for example with your jungler or anybody else who can also tank the baron for you. Now split pushing is an option in late game but grouping is still something that is necessary so don't just go solo mode all game, it will probably cost you more games than you can win. Finally for a team fighting in the late game positioning and, and target selection is key so that means you can't just go ham for the enemy carries flash in and, and get blown up, sometimes it's just smarter to hit the tank in front of you because actually you're a tank killer so you can simply kill them 
pretty quickly actually and probably faster than enemy AD carry regardless of the item builds and who is ahead simply because of the very very strong W through damage. Regarding main combos I'd like to say that there are of course way more than these but I picked a couple of them which you can use frequently. So first off the auto attack Q auto attack combo which is just there to reset the auto attack cooldown basically and get a big chunk of damage off in a short period of time. It also is quite great for CSing as you can see here and it's just a very standard combo which you can use throughout the game in pretty much every scenario. Then we have the auto attack, auto attack Q, auto attack combo which is just a large chunk of damage done in a short period of time with the silver bolt proc of course and you often combine these combos with other more intensive combos. Next up we have the auto attack, auto attack E combo where the E procs the silver bolt actually and it's kind of a quick trading combo which also prevents the enemy from trading, trading back usually. It's also very efficient against the Kalista, for example, who would like to proc her E, her rand damage on you. Then we have the Q auto attack, auto attack E combo, which is most, mostly used for gap closing and then, you know, putting in the auto attacks and the E to prevent the enemy from trading back, but in this case it was used to dodge an incoming skill shot and then do the combo. So not the perfect example, but still, I hope you get the idea behind this. Finally, one way to all-in an enemy target is by popping your ultimate, Borg, auto-attacking and saving the Q to reposition or dodge any skill shots or area of effects. Then of course trying to get a stun off with the E and proccing of course as many silver bolts as possible. So auto-attacking continuously until the target is dead is of course what you want to do. And I want to say that this is just a standard kind of ability sequence I would say, but of course you need to dodge skill shots earlier or later or as many times to use the Q for more damage, as you can see here. For the laning phase you often start by helping out the jungle of course with his first camp, so with a Gromp or Crux. You don't really do that many camps as Vayne at level 1 because you don't have any percentage health damage and you don't have that much damage level 1. So we want to basically just help your jungle get a good start and then head to lane and avoid getting, of course, caught off guard by the enemy level 2 power spike. As you can see here, it's important to respect that, especially on Vayne since you have so low base stats and <clears throat> of course the tumble but not really escape at level 1. And you can see here that they even back off before they hit level 2, so some people might just back off once to see the enemy hits level 2 but then it might be too late. Next up, of course dodging skill shots is pretty much the key to winning every single matchup if the enemy team has skill shots, if not then of course you can't really dodge anything, but it just shows that even against Lucian who is likely known for bullying Vayne actually, you can really dodge the Harris. but if you don't do it, it really costs you a lot of lane pressure and you can really get zoned heavily. A little trick for you I'd like to throw in here is how to follow up with it, for example with the Alistar headbutt pulverize combo, it works great to just lock down an enemy target for long periods of time and they would even got the kill to be 2 there. Next up, last, last hitting on the turret is important how to know and it's actually easy on Vayne with the auto tag reset and the E, you can basically get almost any creep easily or in this case just put an auto tag in for the cast of creeps and then push it off with a second one. But the problem is if you get pushed on your own turret and you don't dodge the skill shots as in this clip, you can get dove easily. Your low base stats are basically a free pass for the enemies to dive you, especially if you're on your own. You can see here, even though Imp plays it pretty well and he almost gets the kills here, he gets outplayed in the end and dies. You want to make sure not to overextend needlessly, for example in this clip he tries to go aggressive but actually pays the price with his life almost instantly as you can see here. So really really bad positioning. and. This of course can coast you all ins pretty easily. For example, in this clip you can see they go in on Lucian and Braum comes in of course, it was kind of baiting actually, and they actually get the return kill on Vayne, he couldn't really do much there after committing so hard, even using the flash and the heal and everything, didn't work out, and it just shows that it's very easy to lose all ins, especially if you can't touch skill shots. In this case, case however, they actually don't hit the Braum Q and you can see that it was the same matchup they were actually behind there and they do get the return kill there without too much effort basically. And finally I want to say that it's important to know when to deny minions. For example when you're pushing a turret on your own, for example and nobody's there, it's important to maybe get the creep wave behind it and then finish the turret off to deny even more CS. For the teamfight section I have a couple of clips prepared for you this time. First up we have some bad ones, how not to do it basically. You can see in these clips that the positioning is off, that the target selection is off or just he goes too ham or just doesn't really dodge anything with his tumble and he pays the price of his life pretty early in this fight but actually his team was playing so well that they just capitalize on that and actually get the return kills there. But it just shows that if you waste your flash early the enemy team will just flash on you and then try to kill you if you play like that. 
Next up with a team that where he overextends pretty hard, for example he thinks he can get a couple of kills here but the teleport comes in, the Alistar comes in and of course they give up a couple of kills here, going too aggressive, getting in front of the tank line and the front line basically and just getting focused easily by doing that, so that's something you want to avoid of course. Now for my favorite clip where Im gets blown up immediately at the start of the fight, you can see he actually tries to go in and flank but actually just gets destroyed at the start of this fight and just shows that you're very very fragile. Now for a pretty interesting fight where you can see that the smallest mistake even can cost you your life and even more sometimes. So they actually start off very nicely here with a pretty, you know, questionable tower dive but then they they peel back, they pull back and they get a couple of kills here actually on the carries for example on Kalista in a second here. But now you can see on the Victor, he actually goes hard and then misses one auto attack, he actually hits the creep here as you can see in a second. And it just shows that even the smallest mechanical error can really cost you a fight. Finally, how to do it correctly with the target selection example in this clip where he just attacks the nearest target possible. It doesn't really matter if it's a tank or not because you actually kill tanks fairly quickly but then even a nice a nice flash over the gravity field and even chase up. But he doesn't really get the kill quite on the victor, but it just was a very, very well played fight overall. Last hitting is tremendously important on Vayne and succeeding at the champion, so you need to learn and practice it, of course. This clip basically just shows that even the best Vayne players like Imp even mess up their CS sometimes. Of course, sometimes the support is at fault here and he even needs to know how to help the AD carry in every situation when the wave is pushed under the turret, but still, you can do a lot with better timing simply. Now, CSing in the jungle is also important. Farming up is just the number one goal you have on Vayne and the jungle creeps are easy targets because of the percentage health damage and the lifesteal. Now, speaking about objective control regarding Baron, this clip shows you just how fast you can actually do it. In roughly 16 seconds the Baron will be dead after spawning at 20 minutes. It just shows with the silver bolts and tumbling into the wall to get even more auto attacks off quicker is a very very fast and easy way to rush a Dragon or Baron. Now I'd like to highlight Vayne's immense 1v1 and dueling strength as well as her chase potential. You can see in these clips that She's just doing so much damage in a very short amount of time, especially when the enemy team gets under against the wall. It's just an easy lockdown, very, very easy kills all across the map. And the 1v1 outplays, as you can see here, they all depend pretty much on how to dodge the enemy's kill shots with the tumbler, with the flash, for example. And finally, against the Fiora, you can really see how even though she really didn't use her stun, it was parried, she got a very easy kill because of her very, very strong 1v1 damage. On the contrary, being over aggressive can really lose you a lot of games. In this clip they get ganked and they actually stay at the fight, I guess because Mata was on his way to the bot lane as well, but it just shows that you really shouldn't do that and it's just way too high risk to do something like this in the bottom lane. Now, next up, a couple of getting caught clips basically where they overextend and get TP ganked by the Riven and the Ash Arrow of course it as well. The only way to have avoided this basically would be to not even be there in the first place. Next up we're talking about rotations, many AD carries just stay in the bottom lane all day long but if you get the tower you can definitely use your pressure elsewhere on the map to get the top turret, mid turret and snowball the map heavily in your favor because even if the enemy bottom lane gets the bot tower, if you get all the outer tower turrets down it's really a lot of gold in your team's favor and just snowballs the map very heavily so keep that in mind. Lane swaps are also pretty interesting to abuse on Vayne because she actually has such strong 1v1 and 2v2 abilities if played correctly. You can see here, warding is important though because otherwise they would just get chased down basically by the enemy team. But in this, in this case with the cannon ward here across the wall, they can stay safe and get a free turret basically. Dodging skill shots is important to win the lane and the game. In this clip he gets hit by both the skill shots from Brom and Kalista even though he tried to dodge them and it just shows that it can really cost you the lane pressure, but more so in the late game, it can cost you the game even. For example, getting hit by a Thrashog or Blitzcrank Hook, not dodging it with the tumble, can cost you everything. As you can see here, the whole team collapses here on the allies and they just get wrecked completely. As a final note, I'd like to highlight just how amazing Vayne is at killing tanks with the Silver Bolt procs and the Players Ranking build, of course. It's very easy to kill the tanks and the frontline from the enemy team quickly, even the Malphite with a full tank and tries to dive the Vayne here. Pretty much gives up his life very, very quickly with the Silver Bolt procs, doesn't stand a chance, and they actually push on to victory here. 
Before I end the video, I'd like to show you the game plan once more. Additionally, you can find the images used in this video, for example, the runes, masters, item builds in the description down below in the imager album for downloading or just viewing on the web. Also, I'd like to highlight that I only do these guides now every two weeks since the semester started once again. So yeah, that's about it. Welcome to the end screen everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode, as always, thanks for liking and sharing this video. On the right hand side you can see a link to the previous Play Like a Pro episode on how to play Twisted Fate like the infamous Epto. Of course down below there is a link to the playlist where you can find every single episode I've made so far. That's about it, I hope you enjoyed as always, thanks for watching once again, until next time, bye bye.